On the outskirts of Bab al Amr in Homs, there is massive destruction. But inside this neighborhood, one of the first to be completely free of Bashar al-Assad's forces, people can take to the streets without having to fear government snipers. In the early days of the uprising, there were large protests that would often draw the fire of government forces. Now, the demos are much smaller in size, but there are more of them. In places, government troops can't reach. Every day and every night. Many women and children are among the protesters in this area, where the right to protest is protected by the fighters from the Free Syrian Army. The poets are among the most popular at the gatherings and among the most hated by the regime. Then Ali flew from Tunis. Ali Saleh is burned by fire. Mubarak is in court and Maumar killed by the revolutionaries. Your day is coming soon, Bashar. This poet says that he is inspired by the atrocity committed by a set forces. I write about the destruction that Bashar has inflicted on us, about the tanks that strike us on Bashar's orders, about the warplanes that he sent to us, while he claims there are no warplanes. I write on everything. Everything that Bashar denies happening, I write about it. Others went their anger in moments of despair. Activists took me to this funeral in the village of Dabal Kabir, outside of Homs. By God, we will hold anyone accountable who is oppressing us. All of them. We know the officers who are giving the orders. We know all the people who are killing our children. We are the sons of this country. We are not leaving this country. A man named Malik was being laid to rest and almost the whole village turned out. Malik was shot to death by government militia at a checkpoint. His little brother couldn't hide his despair. With every civilian killed, the hatred for the regime grows and any chance for a peaceful end to the bloodshed in Homs seems to fade a little more.